Hello everyone, my name is October Raven, and the name of the game is Disco Elysium. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and obey. Where is my... My coup generator is not here. Oh, well, it is now. Okay. So. Drive everything set up right. Okay. So, continuing where we left off before. Where is my mouse cursor? There it is. <laughs> Solving us a crime. Mon Dieu, officer. It is worse than I thought. Believe me. I know all about that kind of pain. I've had hip trouble for the past week. Maybe it's time to slow down, enjoy life a bit. Anything I can do to assist you? Let's uh, confront our truth. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Ah, uh, Precinct 57, we've been attacked. Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. It's been this way for a while now. My guess is the Union is listening in on our conversations and jamming outward communications to protect themselves from Kremlin. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is ineffective. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us cut off the grid completely. That dangerous? No more dangerous than stepping between three armed mercenaries and 18 million men, I hope. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The streets seem safe enough to me. If anything, taking all the mercs made things calmer. For now. You can try calling again. Just don't mention the tribunal. And remember, they are listening in. They're shutting you up. Silencing you. Don't fucking drop your guard. Everything sounds okay. No drumbeat of total war yet. If anything, everything sounds too okay. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Please connect me to for, for Just for a sale. moment. Ten four. Come in, officer. Over. Jules, I've heard some people think of me as uh, La Puto Madre's peon. You think I'm corrupt? Ten four, sir. Uh, well, there have been some talk, sir. <laughs> there's been some talk? What do you mean there's been some talk? I think I'm corrupt. I only meant that there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there are always some talks in the station. You know how officers in Jamrock are. But then again, some of us truly are on the take. It's unfortunate. Over. Fine. Roger that. 10 10. Yes. Well, that didn't really answer anything, did it? Reading group, I guess. Hmm. Shit, pig, you got torn off bad there. Blood like a like a fucking pig? Kuno hopes you learned your lesson and Kuno doesn't have to send his guys after you again. Now, what do you want from Kuno? Uh, I know you took the the uh, locust from the traps of the cryptozoologist. Oh. Yeah, Kuno took the bugs. So what? So it wasn't the phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. Uh, I was just hoping it was the Reed Frasmid. Yeah, well, 
Kuno's all you got, bitch! You don't say you don't give a fuck about bugs and then you go build all bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop! Locusts coming down like a shadow. This must be the night city he mentioned when you asked him where he's been. So that didn't there is night city? Yeah, local city. City of rage. City of lights. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. The lameness is causing her physical pain. The damage may be permanent. So your rage present sounds pretty cool. Kuno, the pig wants to help you. Oh, that's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Making art is a worthy calling. Oh my god, Kuno! I'm gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds! Don't let him, Kuno! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Someone's coming to take you away. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his... You got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. I have to ask, what does the city locus mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuro just likes to focus. Kuro likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. I'm just gonna have to look at Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. You're gonna stop them from. You're gonna stop taking them from the traps then, right? I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. C was right. The girl's face appears again above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. She doesn't know whether to be glad because Kuno is finally convinced of the lameness or more worried because of his continued use of the first person singular. Kuno is Kuno, not I. Alright. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The insulin of has been. Hmm. He recognizes the name. Wait, you know what that is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. Fuck, does Kuno care? Uh, so I'm looking for the children of the big sea. Would that be you? Kuno isn't a fucking communist bacon man. He's a fucking Kunoist. A new mode of government. Ruled by Kuno. Outside of this backyard, it will never exist. Fuck out of here with your commie propaganda. There's only Kuno Ganga in the kingdom of Kuno. Watch out, pig. It's a dangerous world out there. But well, Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to be? Who knows? The girl is ignoring you. Doesn't matter anyway.
talk to Cindy. Can we talk to Cindy? She's not there anymore. Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. I can tell you, I The RTs? <laughs> Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say <sighs> for others. Ah, uh, that's all, thanks. She mumbles some kind of a response. Ask away, policeman. Hmm. Should ask about these other places. The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. She really doesn't like those nut jobs. Bad blood there. Why is there a hole in the bad apartment? Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? So why the residents have vacation? Mailbox overflowing. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. Who lives in apartment number 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural <sighs> people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Sure, I'll try that. Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. You know, I think about the young communists behind the padlock door. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. Ah, uh, that's a symbol of communism. A symbol of what now? Communism, you know, like a world revolution. Never heard of it. <laughs> She mumbles some kind of a. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Is Spire supposed to have the Digibrick in there? You me? Of course not. Scare them. Suspected of some big crime. You have plenty of reason to enter. I don't need a warrant if I can, if I suspect there's a bit of break in. Oh, come on! Well, that was easy. That was smart. My name is Marielle Charpentier, and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Boy, there are a lot of different keys there. More than 20 
at least. Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? It feels flimsy in her, with the words Revachol Zone of Control written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with <coughs> shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Very easy Thank you. Are. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. What are you doing here? I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. Who lived here? It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent, but that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted, or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Who lived in the uh, apartment down the hallway? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. The my money is us. You know, not much money. The apartment's pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous <sighs> architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. The radio computer wizards are invested with magical economic powers. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. My money's also disappeared. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. So what happened don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. Of course. I must steal your drugs. Wee. Give me a moment. Uh, it's just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tides. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Eh, uh, no one is coming. There'll be nothing but us or killing real estate agents. We won't be killing anyone. And you shouldn't say things like that. You're a police officer. There's been enough killing. I've seen it. <laughs> She's seen it and known those who have been killed. Hi again, gendarme. Bye-bye, gendarme. My man, you're alive! Almost. Kind of. Sort of alive? Yeah, alive the big Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, <coughs> but I heard it was quite the encounter. Had a strong sense of finality to it. So what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is local union muscle behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed. 
even if it kind of turned into a shit show. Nah, I'm still looking around. Loose heads tie up. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you. But hey, you're still breathing, right? Uh, I met the uh, lady driver. Uh, she's called Ruby. Okay. Is it wise to share information about the case like this, sire? The lieutenant throws you a quick glance. What are you doing? Yeah, I can't ask uh, share anymore. That's probably for the best. You keep your job to yourself. With a job like yours, you have to. Okay, racist is gone. The boy Dero stares at you with respect. Then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Yeah, you got no shot, no big deal. Yet you leave. It goes back to an older era where this was commonplace. You have a true boyadero heart. Alright, where is it? Hiding, gathering themselves. The harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in or out for the time being. Okay, I'll be good time. No, man. Not today. Today is war. He says it matter of factly. Like it's no big deal. What's gonna happen next? I will tell. I'll tell Everard you drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. What will you be doing? I'll be okay here. Doing lookout. Quite the side, aren't they? Getting to like that red I am. Don't worry about me. I live to alleviate the worries of our brothers. See if any insane killers turn up. Then I'll run. And live. I'm sure you'll you know it, friend. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping. You're you. I'm a cop. I don't really exist in this world. I live between life and death. Everyone does that, in a way. You don't have to get shot for that. What happened to you anyway? We heard gunshots from the town. They were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. Well, the other guy's two dead ones at a hospital. So you're a killer? That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. I was getting along before this happened. I, I've always taken you for one, that's for sure. Not a lot of RCM men who aren't killers. Of course. Can I help you with something? Uh, when you get that, I would. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Two days of sunshine, I just got an infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men round here. Be sad to lose the first one. That's cool. 
be boasting your bacterial infection like that. Where are you about? If you promise to bring it back, and no scraping the hull, I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat, and no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. What if I want her out? See, that makes me not want to lend you my skiff. On a boat, rocking leads to capsizing. That there is an absolutely 100% rock-free skiff. You got that? What's on that island? Nothing just ruins, fortification, it had a curb gun. Hasn't been there herself. Who has then? So you haven't been there yourself, who has then? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. This must be one of the many fortifications that was used in the dying days of the revolution against coalition forces before they took this city. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be all right? Be my guest. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. Thanks. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. You've been to that island, right? And that island. Yeah, that one. I just need to know it's there. That's, um, nothing. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And, and we make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or oh, not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war. But this could be important. Shells? I don't know what they are. What then? They're lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. They must mean a human being. On that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives there? No. Yes. Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire because, guy? Because, because, because he asks to put the fire out. Why is he asking you to put the fire out? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes. What about lights? Uh, I don't know. Did you mean there are electrical lights? Um, yes. What else can you tell me about the guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. How come? We, we ran. He just yelled, we shouldn't be there. Father used to go there too, Our huh? Our father killed himself. Don't say that, he didn't. Your father didn't kill yourself? I don't know. Doesn't even have anything to do with this, you. Father isn't the fire guy. The two things are unconnected. Your question didn't make sense. So you know, is there anything more you can tell me about that? There's a... Lights, fire guy. We should check up on that island. Well, uh, the little, little, little yes. sir? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Alright, guess we're taking the 
jetty. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your account? Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. Yeah, let's go. to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then, there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in a distance. Let's go. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot <coughs> of the coast. Hmm. See, so the leaf on plants. Ah, yes. So it seems. You think it was useful? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies? You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. As a defensive measure, lock it off that side of the bay. I From enemies. Know. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. 
This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Downward is downward. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall. To your right, the lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. The hollow ring. The canister is empty. Dust falls from the generator and down into the ammo lift. Hmm. Where is Downstairs, where is he? somewhere, God, liquid hurts. carbon. I would imagine it takes mazout. The kind that's favored by vagrants and fuel thieves. It's been a long winter, long and cold. If anyone stayed here, they'd need a generator. What does it mean, a I generator? I don't know. I'm not a philosopher. That is his idea of a joke. The chair improves the universe's material. A small agony. Minuscule bones may have fractured. But it proves the point. Ouch. He nods approvingly. He even smiles. Someone here? who is basic electrical skills has restored it in order to keep the room warm. Maybe it's the fire guy. The wind outside picks up some. Wait, do I have fuel? I've had this fuel for years now, fuck. Completely didn't realize it. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Most are soft covers. Serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures, popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalist T. and T. Harpin, husband and wife. Widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive among what is mostly commercial fiction? and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. 
light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Some once made themselves a home. Oh yes, under the oh. bed, there is a rather extensive collection of critical theory. That is, dour, life non-affirming left-wing literature published by small imprints such as Abattoir Firm and Uzia. It's not exactly like reading. Ah. Uzia. I agree. Humanitarian sciences. It stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Ravachol West. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Wasn't there some in the communist students' room? Hmm, certain apartment buildings you'd have some as well. Well, yes. That one student did. The little books seem inconsequential next to the big pile of frivolous entertainment covering them. Article theory books. What do you think this uh, part means? Again, I am not a philosopher, but whoever has lived here, they have some education and a certain set of interests. Interesting. Soft covers. Oh. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner. Resting on piles of soft cover grass, white linen and a pillow are visible under a worn-out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. You force the rest of the sentence out through pain, thick as molasses, no longer able to hear yourself speak. You know, officer, you can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. No. Yes, any time. If you need a rest, you don't have to be a hero. inside a larger one a heavy steel blast door there is a conventional keyhole above the handle it's very small another part of the island probably the lock looks like it could still be usable maybe this is one of the doors we don't open he's right it would be better to open its big brother a powerful engine hangs under the ceiling it must control the blast door is he controls anywhere? I think there's a console just southeast. Let's look around. Getting the blast door open seems like the best plan. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel. A frequency band and even a keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs, with wires coming out, they terminate here. Possible. Urgence, ouvert, allumé, radio diffusé. It sounds like this device was used to control the electronics here. Maybe it's still... This device was used to control the electronics in the room. It could open doors, control lights, function as a radio computer. We need to restore power before using... We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. The boat engine. Maybe we can get some from the boat engine. My kinema. No. I don't... The console stands by, mutely. ICM? This feels familiar somehow. What's ICM? Insul Indian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communard Army. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. Yeah. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. 
Said I should always wear muscly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you pant. Are you sent for the glorious revolutionary army? There were all sorts of groups and groupuscules back then. It doesn't really matter. White star? No. An upside down star. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the commune. Just After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Yefreto. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. What is no, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sky. Alright. Uh, let's The skiff is swaying on the wave. The skiff is so Are you sure? There are things we still need to do. Damn it. Ha, another gas can. And all right. There's a rain soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits. Like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover. Along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it. Filled to the brim with cigarette butts. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand. Tio Moteri. Huh. Like the ones we found on end's end. I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water, the ruins look familiar. A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire, capeside apartments, Rue de Saint Gislaine, 33A and 33B. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de Saint Gislaine, 10. The doomed commercial area. The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. Its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light catches your eye on the rooftop. 
sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clausia's room. Can't be certain, but... What? Do you have a line of sight to the window? What are you talking about? Can't be certain. It's certain. Uh, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the a room. A pair of binoculars? Or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger. On a calm day like this. Yeah, I can make it. I can Good. make the shot. I think we have it, Detective. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Affirmative. Finally. In our defense, nothing pointed here. Many, many leads pointed elsewhere. Seven people are dead. Don't beat yourself up, officer. We did not put guns in their hands or get them drunk. The lieutenant pauses. Regret comes over him. We will make up for it. Here. I feel it. Sugar still here. Where? On this island. He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says he feels uncomfortable suddenly. We should move now. Okay, back. So. This old cylindrical the lieutenant assists you, yes. holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old walls before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. The greasy... The offer still stands. Take it. You don't look so good. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until you feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Wait, what? Sleep. Uh, yeah. Back. 
back up. That was a mistake. Alright, so let's do this again. This old cylindrical generator waits with its fuel cap open. Add quick save. This old the lieutenant there's a red the recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old that should do it. Turn it. Automatic boot. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. After you. Before I four outside, when we were walking across the I felt someone watching me. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. What's there? I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. A dim golden glow. The lighting in the room turns on with a sizzle. The old button is stuck. Yes? trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids to meet yours, unclouded by cataracts. His eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. You the fire guy? You what now? I can't hear you. Nothing. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown up. You're trying your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. You close the blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? I you know I was coming. The boat engine. On the water. It's, you it's there. not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. That bell might it's right? a three Angong 446. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samaron rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. Sinhao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk, white from the ball. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the world revolution in the Safray Empire. 
extinguished in 06. Not way for the board, I remember. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn, dog. Well, you're up in a stay true to you, mine is stay true to me too. Yes, I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. Have you come to make me one of them? We have come to ask you questions, nothing more. If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? The danger levels here are hard to read. One moment he's a fire, the next a fire gone out. So I need you to put that again so you can talk to her. The lieutenant pulls his pistol from the holster. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. Kim? The lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's forehead. Put it down now, sir. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. Like an amputated limb in the sand, he steers on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. What did you say? The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. The future teaches you Real to be music. It's La Révacholière, you shit-licking bougie dog. Chanson de soldat of the black and white marching song. I know love it, It's a marching song of the world revolution. There you go. One of three. In Grad, they sang brave children, favorites of history. And in Sin Yao, it was. Some Samaran shit, I guess. How's it go? How did it go? Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Still warm from his parched hands. Not the metal. The metal is ice cold. This weapon has been modified several times. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm, made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 millimeter, made in Sinyao. Jacket ammunition for right tank and the right calibre. He's liking this. Uh, and it's as I said, Minson how? No one said it has to be a Verna Grave. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a triangle. But... It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanty Shanty. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. It's been patched off, I suppose. I wonder how old it is. The old man does not answer. He just stares in front of him. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession. In time. Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan. And a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. The commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your uh, holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The army of the revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Control Orion and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here, 
On May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. You've been on this island for 43 years? No. I've been on other islands, too. I was an Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. To use user back, your unit? I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> And of courage, too. Lots of faith. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took for, what? for reaction to take hold. It was a reaction, you were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when? May the 13th, 08. 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the cloud. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic. The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flat tower, huddled on the floor. The artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. What then? I ran. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers underground, by the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night, and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. What was that? Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Some kind of great terror. Worse than you've ever seen. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. What? That the bourgeois are not human. <sighs> That's definitely enough now. The old man does not say more. Those black eyes of his keep piercing you as he looks to some great distance and shakes his head slowly, retreating from it. He said this is your trembling. You're with the RCM, the coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. Well, I have secret plans to turn the RCM into a Mazovian revolution, isn't it? Rock and roll posturing. You're the RCM. 
You represent the Moralist International, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, the Parti Communiste en Solonde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. The commune art signed the instrument of surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. Honorable. Honor is a feudal atavism. My motive is class. So you're a communist soldier for the communist No, army. I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not to the army. Gotcha. Like you belong to the moralist party. How do you conceal yourself all these years? It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsov coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequencies dead. How'd you get here between here and me? At night, I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... I just walk I there. don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, <laughs> rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting, drinking, laughing. Ah, uh, the weapons cache uh, in the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Grandma <laughs> scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. Small bunker under fell if you stay there. The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to. But not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins. On the ground. You smoke uh, too much worry cigarettes? I do. You ever smoke them <coughs> on the mainland? They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. One more the thing. old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You've been hiding for 43 40. years and 10 months. Like for my entire it's life. Too long. It's not how a human being should live. <clears throat> but I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. You couldn't give up. He nods, but he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, 
fishing, waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the Whirling in Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer jean vic Mayer inspects giant letters across the plaza mosaic in dark red government marked heavy fuel oil. Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind the writing. Still smelling of petroleum. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. I come here. I sure that's not what people are playing. I am not a fool. I know. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try. Whatever I do. What is this place? It's not an island. What? It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. What was it used the for? congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. They're taking a Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Murderers. You don't know. You haven't seen it. Iblis, the black-eyed angel. Have you survived all this? How does anyone survive? I steal supplies, vegetables, I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. How is your health? Mr. Dross. I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool. To... He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you, toy guns. Have you felt mental? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of I don't even know what. Inferno? I also live in home. Also now. At least you know it. The traders of this city turned the lights back on in the 30s, after the fighting stopped. Ruins, glittering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? I have rather serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. I've used it for killing people. Here we go. A trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done... I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. This is it. 
You can feel it, like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while. But, but. this is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Going straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. I know you make me sure those. Nothing comes to you. And in them, a chill, like electricity running up your spine, crawling into your skull. What? All is not as it seems. Detective. What should tell me? I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that guy the last week? I don't want to tell you anything. You grotesque murderer. And why did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. <sighs> did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contract right now? The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. The fascist death squad who, who took a bullet in the mouth of the mighty Arch Fourth. Oh yes, that one. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder and an officer of the Commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. I need your coverage. I've got this. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military-grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. I'll change the subject. We have the murder one. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Call it. We have the murder weapon. <laughs> This feels good, doesn't it? Telling things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. <sighs> We've done the ballistics. The shot came from the I island. saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long-range rifle in your possession. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dras. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists for fascists. Done his part. Just one thing remains unclear. The rifle does not seem to have a scope. Hmm, where's the scope? How'd you make the shot without the scope? Forget about your stupid fucking scope. I don't know where it is. Find it yourself. It's your problem now. He lost it. He just doesn't know where it is. Forget it. Push on. 
the best interrupted line of sight in that window of all Barney's. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasia's roof. Yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. They're revolutionary symbols from the war. Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Clasia's bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. You got it. Remember? The boot prints were like no modern soul. There are May bells behind the victim's window. Damn May bells. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too? The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash uh, the filth away. These are the only, only place I've seen with these flowers. They blossom on the islet before. We fertilized them with our blood. Resurrection was snow white in May before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets turning green with white flowers in white snow. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat fingered bourgeois children to play with. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Do you know any secret paths? Pinball workshops? I may. So the young woman, Class A. Uh, those dried fingers are behind her window. Class G. He knows her, but hadn't heard the name. You had... That's right. Um, you know, right? She had uh, intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim? Don't leave any loose ends. Get him on everything. What brand of boots you wearing? Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. Some shit. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. The maker is called Sansari. You see their V-shaped logo but can't make out the size. These are not the unusual horizontal pattern soles you saw in the dust on the floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. The size fits, but not the sole. Hmm. Simpler? No. This is another loose thread you will never connect. Damn, the sure. lieutenant raises his brow. What are you doing? He's thinking. We almost got him here. Not now. Stop yourself. Kim. People change shoes, detective. It was you. You were there, weren't you? Crawling in the whirling in the rags. What were you doing? Some kind of reconnaissance? Preparing the scene? Listening in on her? Trying to rack your brains. You're desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that thing. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silence suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind, seagulls in the distance. You know who he was, a coalition trained murderer, armored and armed. He wasn't human, the blunt end of a hammer, dripping with blood. He was a killer, but he was all under pressure to walk. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company train killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate, not when they die by the hundreds. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachal. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. 
I was breathing with them in phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it, anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. And you were looking at them? The victim and the young woman having sex? Through the scope of your rifle that night? Before you shot him? The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at it? No. I'm always looking. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. Helps him see all the shit. And if you don't like it? Click. That's the part of the sh it's part of the shit you see. Then you pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He will not stop now. These dialectical materialist types never do. Exploit it. We've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. What specifically did you not like when you saw the monitor? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. Do you jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. The caliber of bullet he used does not do that kind of damage. How long have you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night. Really. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me. But I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. Was she either? Her passport and ticket to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachebru. In the free state of Semenine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. Some kind of hidden container on the little coast? Yes, after she'd gone. It was a submersible. Well made, actually. Sloppy. We should have gotten her to tell us about this. Did you take the documents? No. I put them back. Why would I take them? I'm not going to film. Oh, I mean... Did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook? From the documents? She had different color hair on the photo. And glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. 
He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you can see through a bruises through a scope of a rifle. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. And now you know all these things. It quickly comes to you. You see them through a hole in the wall. Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. See her through a window on the roof? Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. Okay, you've been through a secret roof. Rolling the rags, those are your footprints here, you just changed shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny, the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. I can just walk in there now, after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen plenty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. Andy found use for it. A spare key, like the one hanging behind the union box window. She had feelings for the woman? There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes. Over the years, it's not unproletarian to feel something. That one you left tried for hours behind the window? No. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. To console her? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. A sudden pang of rage. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So your conclusion wasn't him, it was her. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she? That classier. I haven't seen her there for days. She got away, but she let us here first. She figured out someone was watching her for the sequel. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week at the island. Like she knew. She'd look at night, crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Riversham, the oceanic wind washes 40-story towers. Above them, Lucerne Central Aerodrome, a cocoon suspended in the sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates, and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghost of the city she's leaving, for another, far south, smaller, distant, hidden, not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements, and water, and across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, 
If she didn't squint her eyes, he knew she knows. She was looking at the island, figuring it out, day by day, cigarette by cigarette. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end this. You gonna look at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Dragies, prostitutes, rentiers. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. <sighs> it's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race themed radio shows. In the ruins, in their lorries, pumped full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes, the fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III. A syphilitic murderer on the town square to spit on the working class. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals. Like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. The worst of them is the blood drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon or Quayamoran or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Couple questions. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until in the 30s, those disco whores. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. You uh, mentioned in the union, Mr. Clare? Another hideous disappointment. Unions are the real enemy, the true enemy of the proletariat, placating the masses. Disappointment, so personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. So, ever to this point? That deformed toad, I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation, the smart one. Edgar. Edgar, you mean? <laughs> He talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin, where it's alienation this and hegemony that. So you talk to him? First against the war with him. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Of course. Maybe the Clares asked him to. I him? haven't approached anyone. 
I hid. It was Edgar who came to me. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was the man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. So did you kill the, the Merc Crane? I want to if he cares to suicide, right? You know why I killed that fucker, Dwat. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Tried teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. Okay, he didn't do the hanged man for them. But he's insinuating something. Oh no, the yeah. connection doesn't slap yourself in the head again. Jump start it. Officer. He quickly realized. Mr. Dress, about this deal you made with Edgar, the death of the Colonel mercenary was only coincidentally beneficial to the Clares. But what about the other people you've killed for them? Other people? Like the previous four women of the Union. That's it. That's what you weren't connecting yourself. I didn't fight 40 years to end up an informant for the international regime. What happened? Happened. Still dumb. Your eyes are transfixed on his digits. It's yellow with nicotine. Before, when you asked him about the Union, he said it was a disappointment. They promised him something political. Promised political change and they didn't know. Look dollar. who's up. You're worse off than me. We will have plenty of time to talk about this, Mr. Dras, when you are in pre-detention. It takes years in pre-detention. Go ahead. I've been in solitary confinement my whole life. Ease off it. This was not an unmitigated disaster. The lieutenant mitigated it. Just proceed. Anyway, you went Rene, right? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. I remember him. I remember him from La Nos. Not him, personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. That one. Fat and plump, like a pheasant, just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Dross, shoot me. He whispers with such predatory hunger, it borders on longing. You like to kill him? Not yet. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day. The blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, René. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one for him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. He died. No. Yes. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead? I'm sorry, Mr. Dross. 
I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black bays on these islands. His health ailing. I'm sorry. Fuck you. You cared about All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing his head explode. Now, God damn this world. He reminded him of himself. The same hatred. The same. You try to think of something else, but no, it's just hatred. Let's go on. You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love. To colonize the pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together. Making him endure. I don't even care about those whores anymore. Get it over with. Take me in. Frisell the first. Philip the second. What's the difference? Syphilitic murderers the lot. I don't want to think about those things anymore. I'm tired of all of it. The flame of anger dulls in him. He tires of it. All of it. Glad we talked about what? Hmm. For a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble, who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island, he's prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished. But that's it. You can see no more by looking at his slouched frame. The moment passes. I ain't going. Alright, let's see. The old man stares despondently at him. Aside from the rear. Oh, river. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. Is back of yes, magnesium? and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. So you need to bag it up. You need to get so magged up. You've got yeah, yeah, yeah. The old man stares despondently at the lock. Aside from the rear. What uh, do we have for composure? I don't want to do that. Composure, 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 composure. Composure, 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 composure. Yeah, fuck it. Go. The old man stares despondently at the lump. What yes. strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. It's precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. He's present okay. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated by what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures. Thought processes cut off like <coughs> threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion from anger to grief. Despair. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile, perhaps, his life? but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. 
In summary, you sense some underlying neurological disorder. No, okay. I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the... Alright, let me put my boots back on. Alright. The old man stares despondently at the logs. It's like he's forgotten you're there. Well, you're under arrest. What? But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Do you understand Kimmy's afraid? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. You thought you heard something, but it's just the reed. Maybe we could all fit in there. Does that have room for three? Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland, while the other stays here, but... But then, who watches him while you're coming back in? Watch him while I come back? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? This is a fucking fu- Lillian, you could ask her, maybe. Maybe I can ask that netpicker to watch him. This is no harmless old man. This fucking world. This world, what is? No, listen, listen now. I can come back to you once I take him to the precinct. Okay, how about I take him to the precinct and you wait on the island? I'll do it. Let's go. This like world, this. what are you talking about? Is this us? The wind is cold from the east. Your skin is crawling suddenly. delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. It's still there, an unfolding... Uh, what are you talking about? The giant stick There's inside. nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. There is, I see Tell it. me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reed. Can you, you see I it? I can see it. Four simple words, thank God. If you can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there, spinning slowly. In absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The creature stands on long, stilt like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks.
you barely get to take one step. Damn. The invertebrate reacts with uncanny speed, skating away across the water. It's gone, like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but rings on the sea's calm mirror. It's blending into the tufts of reeds in the distance, moving from islet to islet. Where? Where did it go? Did you get the picture? He shakes his head in silence. And it's, it's just a blur. Went to read there and then Looks I like he doesn't like to stay out in the open for long. Damn it. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. Yeah. Indeed, you found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. What is it? What do you want from- Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the peasant? Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling. And he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dallas? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... I... I lost. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. This site is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. Nothing. The last embers... If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the air would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here. Okay, I'm, I'm past two hours now. I kind of want to keep going, but... swaying on the waves by the let's we are done here the skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in the ride back is uneventful and quiet but for the sound of conversation on the water up uh there is someone inland waiting for you two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer the sea is calm you reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Uh, I think the 
This might be the end game, folks. Look what the tide brought him. I want to call you a teapot, but I'm honestly kind of impressed. No idea where you got all that gear, but there's no doubt in my mind that some bad, bad people are looking for it. Also, you look like a fucking idiot. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? You're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're some kind of murder machine. Where are you, Peter? Hello. Um, Trent Heilerstar. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special consultant Trent Heidelstam, battle officer Judith Mino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island, where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Okay, me out of the back. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What's all that? Harry, we want to help you. Trent, I believe this is where you come in? Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trent, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Shit kid? What an interest in Monica. <sighs> huh. How'd you know I was the here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Okay, but the guard told me. Let's see if this is how she said. Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look safe at all. There was a giant IO graffito in front of the building, mixed with blood. Yeah, this is Junior Delinquent. I don't know. It had Shit Kid written all over it. Shit Kid? You. Shit Kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all I've done. No, because of all that you've done. So you're not even born. Guilty as charged. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true, and it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Only if I had sarcastic or really I'm right. clinically depressed Harry sorry if I wasn't in the mood to butter you up after you told us to fuck off well I suspect so. did you or did you literally not recognize my face we've been partners for how long Harry don't answer that you don't remember absolutely no idea a hundred years judging by the familiarity you feel toward him two years minimum or maybe a short but close stint on the task force so you're not the horse faced woman. No, my name is not horse faced woman. It's Judith Mino. I was assigned to your unit two months ago. I thought we were friends. I just have a stupid Okay. Head. Because you're my commanding officer, I I really want to respect you. I want us to have a normal relationship. That will never happen, Jude. He's the rudest man on earth. He's the reason why the rest of us have to take sensitivity training. And I hate sensitivity training. And Tran hurt some just we Tran held some. Yes. I'm Tran Heilerstar. I never said I wasn't Tran Heilerstar. What was the kid then? Mikael? Mikael's my son. His son? What a joke. Everyone is lying to you. 
So why were you spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. So what were your special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory... He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. No one's who they say they are. Duped. Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Well, Kim, at least you told me who he's here. Yes, I'm still Kim Kisuragi, still a lieutenant from Prison 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, too. Major Task Force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicamar. Ring any bells? Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking Heidelstown, and Guillaume Baby. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined Ortium. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Trump because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Is he blonde with sunglasses? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing for both of you. So what is he going to do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. The 41st isn't... Where have you been all this time? Where have we been? We've been fucking off as far as I remember. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. All will burn. You see when I... Here we go. Alcoholic delirium. Visions. All must pay. Anyway. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pearl, and so on. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? I have something to do with an anomaly in charge, two millimeter hole in the Corresponding to the 20 centimeter hole in your brain. Sure. This theory has great symmetry. I see how it folds into itself neatly. Precisely, Satellite Officer Vic Mir. It's Martinez. I'll explain later, but there's another man who lost his memory. A crab man. Crab man is an unfortunate choice of words, but I was there. The church on the coast shook from an audio spatial anomaly. It may have been anthroponetic, or perhaps related to radio waves. Either way, I have put this into my report. You should read it. I do not, however, think it has anything to do with him drinking himself to the point of brain damage. Thank you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Just to clarify, I do not think his already anthroponetics are a hoax. Pay produces global phenomena. It's proven. However, what has not been proven is total memory loss after drinking too much Komodo Red. Honestly. I think he's just lying to us. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. 
The other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it. Prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in a major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm really yeah. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? For now. now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? I drive your nose from my truck. Ah, so refreshing. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. The thing that tells people you're a police officer. Yeah. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Not today, Badge. And your gun? As if having your badge and gun are natural states. Not achieve. What is it with all these material objects? <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a berm, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. I haven't... I'm not drunk. I haven't started drinking again. So you forgot to drink? I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then? He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. I watched that The man him. doesn't reply, but his expression speaks for him. You should have done a better job, is what it's saying. <sighs> yeah, I had a life. I corpse. don't believe you. You're drunk. You let a suspect escape, a certain classier, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the report, Sari. Lutnon Kitsuhagis. We know. Ah, uh, not take her rose away from her. She gave us vital clue to let us see. Oh, well. If she was nice. I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something, or the fact that you're ever Claire's little Bioni now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Oh, so I've solved the game. It's all bomb. Detective, it's better if I do that. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Yufreta Dubois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing. Also losing the badge. That's so true. Although, 
he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or gloaming. We are about to become vapor even. It's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. You should yell something. No. Yes, let's let the big boys talk. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him anything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped working on the case. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Yeah, it was what it was. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect, three meters tall. It's on the island, uh, camouflaged as the reed. It uh, unfolded from there. I did not, unfortunately, get a photo. But I believe it may have been the insulin the enfasmid. I know this sounds fantastic, but I'm a four times decorated lieutenant of the RCM. I do not make up encounters with cryptids to spice up my day. I am very, very sane. I don't doubt you, Lieutenant. If you say it was the insulin the enfasmid, then it was the insulin the enfasmid. Boom shakalaka. No. Is it somehow connected to the case? The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Nah, it's probably not connected to say, but the perpetrator knew it's So it is connected. We could order a search. I could get people from EPIS on the island, entomologists, doctors. There must be signs of it in the reeds. If we found the Insulindian phasmid, well, that would be absolutely exceptional. The PR value alone. There. You need to make your case now. The floor is all yours. He prepared it well. Uh, the phasmid is female in the freezer. It's nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female, and the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible! Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. Uh... And, uh, items it says, Hamilton's Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. Mm, that must actually be robust sense. if it can move a helmet with its limbs. Maybe produced by Carthogenesis. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? Observ observation. Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's a male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenetic mutation. That makes sense. It Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. And mammals look like hair white lines. Yes, but also red colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. It's a toughy that you don't have a photo. This would look very, very flashy in the papers. None of it says vigilante murderers to me at all. Great PR. I tried to, but I only got a blur. Ouch. 
We can still work top discovers new species in there. I know a good guy in La Majeste, but only after the Ecole Superieure people find it. This cannot be done by French people. It needs to be white coats and glassware for this fly. We need professionals. Uh, the killer, we have a strong motive for him. And this is bugged. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. Revolutionary matronym. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Presovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lilian. His Lilian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachov. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years. Like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay. And trauma too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. It's more than that. The perfect folding mechanism, like the fast Perfect movie. folding mechanism? Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there. Like in your bones or It will pass in time. The previous head of the Dabada's union was assassinated by our killer. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open. In Martinez, where Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears everywhere. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone on. No. Understood, of course. But a case against Everard would be big. I would prefer not to partake in anything union related for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. And if it's how? It seems to be ongoing. I see red banners on the gate. He didn't quite solve it. He cross pollinated information between the company rep and Everard until the rep came to see that the Union desires war. At which point, Mrs. Messier decided to... What? Hand out the terminal? Idea for World Revolution. Eva Lavrush. Cool. To me, it sounds like you got played by Evrach Jair. And it's true. You are his little peony. Is that why you want us to investigate the assassination of the previous Union head thing? To get off Evrach's hook? No. It's nothing like that. He was reckless with information, but ethical. We don't owe anyone anything. This allowed us to stabilize things in Martinez. God, calm down, Jean. Silence. Good. The man doesn't know what to say. Uh, there's also another dead body I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. I I found the body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. And I saw the mystery of the Doom commercial area. I don't know what a Doom commercial area is. Uh, Rue to St. Julian Twain. All commercial building, all a commercial building, all businesses go back there. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Dodge the bullet there. For a moment it seemed like you were just wasting time. So, what do you say? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to. Jude. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait. Before we go. 
The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. <sighs> Where am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but before... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No way, I was relevant to learn the age. You haven't told us about that. You just told us about being a gym teacher. Thanks, Harry, what? it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The collection of sports forever man. Some of your more... <clears throat> Old school wording choices. Your posture, even. The constant stretches. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. God, even this javelin throwing freak here. Okay, contact of course. Mike. Contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. Uh. So you said in Korea I was gym teacher? Yes, you told Jim in cool. I believe that's the term. Told Jim at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboard. Kudo is just east of Jamro. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvie. His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. I joined the, the regular. Then. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. God, that wake was awesome. Oh, you don't say. Does he also vault an impassable gulf of finance and privilege? It is... it is getting cold out. I miss this, I was In your twenties or late twenties, you've really let yourself go since then. Okay, I yeah. knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. I don't like it's this. not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Ooh. Dora something. Dora Ingerland. Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Rebachol. Or was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago, she was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Six years. Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and the Rangelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Who is she? Incredibly bangable. You're seriously using this one just for now. He is very passionate about this. Okay, you're right. She was extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Way fierce. Like a Welkin, basically. Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. Pain Welkin. I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. I think she taught in the Academy des Arts, east of the river, way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees order. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Am I really a dude to come? No. Really? Because it's a suspect thing. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you. I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. So what kind of station is PC for? Us? With the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Get back to it. 
We left Torsten and McLean to run the ceiling. It's not good. Do we recently show up at church price? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. What happened? Why were you go Our there? enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic though. Torson and McLean. Iconic, yeah. yeah. Not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. Sea wing is God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me. Other losers too. The price. Ptolemy Price? He's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Our Ark of the Bloody Murders. Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there, hard, every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershoal. Faubourg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you, and it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Fast, but I need to tell Lena about this. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock. Remember? She's a cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock and Tabernacle Road. She told me about this. Fast. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Fasmid. It's their discovery in part. They should know as soon as possible. Even if we didn't get a photo. So, uh, what do you do now, Ted? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate. Investigate. Want to do that with station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. I meant investigate. Work with us. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I would fit in. I'm crazy enough. Can't take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattered? Juliet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the Harbour. And we also have a huge caseload, you know. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He's really considering it. I'm ready. Good. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the snow swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jérôme, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. 
It's time. Coulson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Lickmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomley Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? I think this may be the end of the story, folks. Oh, that was fun hell of a game, huh? Ah, uh, I think I'll be doing some um, going back and might do it after this, but. I still got time. Bruce Dickinson. Not not the Bruce Dickinson. Ben Davies. I know that name. I think I met. Huh. I 
remember Kuno's dad. Some of these characters I did not meet. Okay, I can't skip it. I'm gonna go to the bathroom while the Chinese, uh, all these, uh, credits roll. There's really no way to skip it.
Come on. Really, Larian help with this. So I'm going to go right, I'm going to jump right back here real quick. You did well. Sure. I'll, you look. Okay. So I just wanna, I just wanna tie that off because I didn't get, I didn't really do it when I meant to do it. in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. <sighs> what shadow lies there beneath the bright gleam? You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. Let's see what Cindy says about it, if anything. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Can't you t I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right- Yeah? Thanks. She me- You've lessened her desire. Okay. Well, that's it. So, uh, you know what? Instead of Haiku the stream, what shadow lies there beneath the bright gleam? That's really all that needs to be said. Alright, this was Disco Elysium. Uh, a lot longer than usual. But, uh, yeah. Later. <laughs>